In this video, we're going to talk about the reaction between sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Sodium bicarbonate is also known as baking soda. Acetic acid is vinegar. We're going to predict the products of this chemical reaction and balance it and also write the net ionic equation. So let's predict the products first. Sodium is going to pair up with acetate. Sodium has a plus one charge. Acetate is C2H3O2 minus with a minus one charge. Because the magnitude of the charges are the same, we can simply write the chemical formula of sodium acetate in a one to one ratio. It's going to be NaC2H3O2. Now, is this soluble in water or is it insoluble? Based on the solubility rules, we know that group one metal cations like sodium, lithium, potassium, the alkali metals, in their ionic form, they are always soluble in water. So we're going to put AQ, which means aqueous, or that they're dissolved in water. Now, bicarbonate, HCO3, is going to pair up with H. When these two get together, they will form carbonic acid, H2CO3. Now, carbonic acid is not very stable. It doesn't remain in this state. In fact, it decomposes into water and carbon dioxide. And so we're going to get liquid water as a product and gaseous CO2. So this reaction is also a gas evolution reaction. This is why when you mix baking soda and vinegar, you, it fizzes. You see these bubbles coming up and it tends to expand. The reason why it expands is due to the gaseous product that we're getting here, the carbon dioxide that's bubbling out of the solution. So now you know why baking soda and vinegar react the way it does is because it's a gas evolution reaction. Now this reaction is already balanced. So that's good news. We don't have to worry about that. But we do need to write the total ionic equation before we can write the net ionic equation. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to write the total ionic equation, everything in the aqueous phase has to be converted into ions. Everything that's not in the aqueous phase, we're just going to leave it the way it is. Sodium bicarbonate, that's in the aqueous phase. So we're going to write it as Na plus. and HCO3 minus. Now, each of these ions remain in the aqueous phase, but because there's so much stuff to write, I may run out of space. But on a test, you want to put AQ for each of these ions. So just want to give you the heads up on that. Now, acetic acid, this one is different though, because it's a weak acid. Even though it's in the aqueous phase, it doesn't ionize completely. So this is one of those special cases. If you were to dissolve sodium bicarbonate in water, it will completely dissociate into Na plus and HCO3 minus. Now, when you put acetic acid in water, the fact that it's a weak acid, only a very small amount ionizes. Maybe somewhere between 1 to 5% may ionize, but the other 95% remains in this form. So because the majority of acetic acid remains undissociated, we're going to keep it that way in this reaction. So that's the exception to the rule. So when writing net ionic equations, or rather total ionic equations, the only stuff that you don't separate that's in the aqueous phase are weak acids and other things that don't dissociate completely. Sodium acetate completely dissociates in water. So we can break that up into Na+. Plus and C2H3O2 minus. Now water is not in the aqueous phase, it's liquid, so we're gonna leave that alone. And the same is true for gaseous carbon dioxide. So this is the total ionic equation. Now, in order to write the net ionic equation, we need to eliminate the spec to the ions. So these are the ions that don't participate in the chemical reaction. In fact, they appear exactly the same 
on both sides of the equation. And so in this example, the spec to the ions are the sodium ions. So what remains will be part of the net ionic equation. So we have bicarbonate reacting with acetic acid to produce acetate liquid water and carbon dioxide. So that's it for this video. So now you understand the reaction between baking soda and vinegar. You also know why it fizzes. That's due to the gaseous CO2 that is produced as a product. And you also know how to write the net ionic equation for that reaction. Thanks for watching.